Shalom. I want to give all praises down and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakwadash. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahushai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside them. Double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. Citations to the elect, whom the Lord have given ears to hear. Once again, the water, but thank you to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai for another day, for allowing me to do another lesson. Lord willing, he keep the spirit on me to continue to fight in his truth as well as you, Akim, pushing in truth sincerity. And um, today's lesson is going to go into how the Lord declares the end from the beginning. I was watching a brother in a camp, Ashiarba, he did a lesson on how Trump mentioned the prophets in um, one of his interviews. And he was speaking on how the prophets, you have guys that say that um, pretty much the end will come by way of uh, the situation in the Middle East with Iran and Israel. All right. And he's talking about us because we're the only ones that's really pushing it. Well, everyone, everyone else is concentrating on trivial matters. The Diddy situation, the World Series, sports, voting. Right? We got our eyes glued on the Middle East because that's what's most important. All right? A vote not going to mean a goddamn thing. In the midst of war. As a matter of fact, martial law may very well be implemented. All right, and when it's all said and done with this voting situation, which Lord willing that be the case. But this is the book of Isaiah, chapter forty-six and verse nine. Remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God, and there is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it ever happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Right? And the Lord has revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets, to where we are correct when we tell you that this place is going down. Right? When we tell you the events in the days to come out of, um, you know, is, uh, America pretty much going into uh, the land of Israel to fight with them. And it's happening. The Apostle Har did a lesson the other day on how Iraq and Israel, I mean, I'm sorry, Iraq and Iran are getting together and joint drills. And the scriptures speak on how um, the Carmanians... And the dragons of Arabia is going to come together. Right? So the Lord is perfect in what he says. Alright? And we are perfect inherently because we say what he says. We preach what he says. Alright? And everyone who doesn't believe in the Bible, like the scriptures say, fear not the incredulity of them that trouble thee. For all the unfaithful should die in their unfaithfulness. You cannot believe that RFID chip is the um an RFID chip is not coming, which is the mark of the beast. You cannot believe that World War III is not coming. Alright? But you're gonna die because you're gonna take the RFID chip, you're gonna eat a missile. And that's pretty much to where you were called to by us of the hopeful elect. All right, we're doubling down on our faith as we see these words coming to pass. Right? And um, essentially, the Lord's determination is for Israel to rule the earth. Right? Um, I was meditating on the scripture how the Lord says he declares the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 and 10. That's... Uh, written in a, in a KJV virgin and um, 
how this thing of ours, this thing of the Lord's rather, is like uh, you ever watched one of those movies where it shows you, it's like a prologue or like a five minute clip in a movie to where it shows you how things will be. And then after that five minutes is over, it transfers to, uh, let's say, 25 years earlier. You know? And um, when you go in the book of Genesis, right, just as a, a point of reference, which is the beginning, all right, description, uh, Genesis means in the headings, the Bara Ashim. The Lord speaks on um, how Abraham's seed will be blessed, um, how there would be a point in time to where it even speaks on how Jacob and his seed, you know, the situation that they would be in the last days. Right? So again, here you are. And this particular time. All right? But no, just no. Just like in the time of Abraham, as, as we just mentioned, you know, that your future was written. All right? The future of America was written. How the future of all these kingdoms were written. You can read that in the book of Daniels. Right? When, um, who was it? The king Nebuchadnezzar had a dream concerning his kingdom and concerning the kingdoms that would come after him. Right? And essentially, his kingdom was called to be taken down. The only kingdom that shall stand is the kingdom of the Lord. All right? Every other kingdom... All right. Uh, we're given uh, every other rulership was given a point and a time to rule. Right. So let me jump down to Daniel chapter two. Points in 45, but we'll start up at like 39. Oh, it's a spirit. But it says, but after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to take your place. Right? And again, this is all by the doing of the Lord because how could a kingdom that's inferior to yours take your place? Because the Lord wanted it to happen. <clears throat> the Lord wanted it to happen, meaning not necessarily by strength of man, right? Which wars do happen to, to the taking down of the kingdom. But ultimately, because the Lord set that in place, set you up in place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one as iron, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. Right now, in this point, you have the Babylonians ruling, right in the time of Daniel. But after them, who rose up? The uh, medial Persians, and then after that kingdom has fallen, it says the third, which is the Greeks, and then following that one, which be would be the Romans. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires. Just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay. Showing that this kingdom will be divided like iron mixed with clay. It will have some of the strength of iron. But while some parts of it will be as strong as iron. Other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other. It says, um, <clears throat> with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay that do not mix. Right? And um, I believe yeah, Daniel's, Daniel's seven chapter speaks on the rising and falling of these kingdoms. And I bring that up because when you compare the two, it speaks on how 
uh, what is it, the legs and the feet are pretty much comparable. So you have the fourth kingdom, and then when you go to Revelations, it was it the twelfth, uh, the thirteenth chapter, how the, the fourth kingdom will rise, will fall and rise again, right? When it rise, rises again, it's going to mix itself with, with weaker nations. You have something today known as the Pigs Nations, which it stands for. It's lock, yeah. It says the acronym PIGS refers to Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain, which were considered the weakest nations in the Eurozone during the European debt crisis. The term PIGS was first used in the 80s to describe the country's high debt levels and questionable budgetary decisions. It became more widely used during the European debt crisis of 2009 to 2014, when these countries struggled to refinance their debt and bail out banks. Um. All right. So yeah, this shows you that, which, it shows you that the EU, in accordance to today, right? Whereas you had um in the ancient world how Rome paired itself with various uh nations, the Franks, the Goths, the Visigoths, the Vandals. Today, he would pair himself. With the Portugal, the Portuguese, the uh, Spanish, which I believe that the Portuguese came out of the Spanish, if I'm not mistaken. The, you know, the various nations um, that comprise of the EU today, the EU and NATO today. But well, some of them will be strong and some of them would be weak. Some of them have strong monetary economies and some of them will have weaker monetary economies. During the reigns of those kings, right? So as we go into verse 43 of the last days, this mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage. But they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix, right? Because in regards to times, all right, these nations would um, fall apart. They would essentially fall apart just like in ancient Rome right the Lord broke that place up he brought him back just to pretty much fall again during the reigns of those kings the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered right now obviously this must this can be talking about the last this can be talking about the previous Roman Empire right because that place fell and here we are you know to where the Lord is not ruling in his place. Right? So this has to be talking about another king. Again, going to today. Where it says, During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and will stand forever. And that's why we keep harping on World War III and how we look forward to that. Because in the midst of World War III, the God of heaven, all right, Yahweh will send his son Yahawashai to crush these other kingdoms. That's why when you go into Revelation, the 21st chapter, it speaks on Yahweh, how Yahawashai will have many crowns on his head. Let's grab it real quick, real quick. Lord willing, we could jump straight to it. Revelation 21, verse 19. No, I'm sorry. I said 21. I meant 19. Revelation 19 and verse... Uh, <laughs> yeah, 11. Then I saw heaven open and a white horse was standing there. All right, the horse represents power and the white represents purity. So a pure power, right, it's going to come out of the heavens all right out of the sky its rider was named faithful and true for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war 
His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. Right? He wore a robe dipped in blood and this and his title was the word of God. Right? And we know the word of God became flesh, which is Yahweh. So this is talking about Yahweh, who the world normally calls Jesus Christ. And he's gonna come and destroy all these very previous nations under him. Right? Um it speaks on how these nations make a tumult and how their thought is to keep us constantly under their thumb. Right? But the Lord has other plans for us. Again, going into the very beginning. All right. Well, as I mentioned Genesis before, but even the whole, whole old, all of the Old Testament, how Israel will come back to rule the earth. The Lord has not forgot about his promise, as it is also written. Yahweh said, um, he has not changed, therefore Israel is not consumed. Right. Time may go on, but the Lord's um, counsel still remains the same. Daniel chapter 2. Right. And it's, there's a whole breakdown. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube of Brothers of Great Millstone. Going into these uh, Daniels 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 13. So you yourself can get this understanding. I just have to go through it very quickly because of uh, the sake of time. It says, the feet and the toes you saw. Okay, we read that. Verse 45. This is the meaning of the rock cut out from the mountain. Though not by human hands that crushed to pieces the statues of the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true and its meaning is certain. I was trying to get it in the GNT, but um, for some reason, we could try to get it real quick, right? But I mean... I like it in the KJV also. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Again, this is speaking on Yahawashai. You can read that in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. We had a, a a huge chariot come out the sky. But it was it was as a, um, a mountain because it was so big. Ezra described it as a mountain. And that it break in pieces the iron... The brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God had made known to the king what should come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So the Lord is surely going to break down our enemies. And the Lord is surely going to bring us home in the midst thereof. Right? So um, I'll just leave it there. Lord willing. You are you edified, shallow arms to the elect.